Midhat Tiich, Product Manager, Communications Technology Group at Hewitt Packard Enterprise, is going to give us a demonstration of how HPE is helping telcos automate network operations. But let's start with Bobby Dutta, Product Manager, Communications Technology Group, also at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So Bobby, what issues are customers experiencing as they try to automate their network operations? So let's take a step back. As everyone in this industry knows, with the introduction of every new generation of communications technology, the one thing that seems to happen is that the complexity of operating the network keeps increasing significantly. And that automatically implies that the cost of operations keeps escalating. And uh, that's all the more so with the introduction of 5G, especially with the core now becoming completely cloud native. And along with that, the disaggregation of the RAM. So that's the first thing that one needs to solve to allow our customers, the service providers namely, to you know, remain competitive. And that's really the main problem that we try to solve. So we assemble what we call an automation platform that enables them to operate the network, essentially going closer and closer to what we call zero touch, so that you don't have a human being touching the network when it is delivering services to the customer. And that enables significantly bringing down the cost of operations. And we believe we do a very good job at that. So what has been holding back innovation in this area? A couple of things. One, I think, is the fact that it's not easy to accept a new way of operating and doing things. So for instance, typically the service delivery organization and their associated systems and processes would run independently of the organization that actually is responsible for the service assurance. And what we have figured out by studying this situation for a long time, intently, that it really makes sense to bring the two together. Couple the service delivery along with the service automation. And that would significantly enable our customers to be able to first bring services to the market much faster, which enables them to turn on the revenue much faster. And also to be able to accommodate change because one of the things that the newer generation technology has done is that it enables you to rapidly make changes and operate in what's called an agile manner. And I believe we enable and help that. So these are, in my view, the principal things that uh, you know, we feel we have, we have a, a very, very good solution in place to be able to help our customers. So let's take a look at that solution. So, as you can see over here on the chart, the there are principally the two stacks. On the left-hand side, you see the service delivery one, which we normally call orchestration. And there are some specific reasons why we call it orchestration. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you see the system that we call the service assurance system. And what we have done is that we have coupled the two of them together to build what's called a closed loop. And the closed loop implies there is really no human being in the loop. In fact, the only time the human being comes in the loop is in two situations. One, during the design process, and two, if there is an exception, something out of control comes in. Otherwise, in general, it's a zero touch system. And this is one of the principal you know, benefits that emerges from here and enables non-stop operations at you know, increasingly lower cost of operating the services. With that, uh, I think you might be interested in looking at you know, a little bit under the hood and looking at some of the details of how we sort of achieve this. So I'm going to ask my colleague uh, Midhat to step in and you know, walk you through it. Thank you, Bobby and Clarence. Let's see our system in action. So just a quick intro how the whole system is set up right now. So like we said, we have orchestration, we have automation. So we have a uh, workload which is called Telephone Application Server. We already pushed it using Service Director, so automatically into the environment, plus all the monitoring and all the surveillance required for it, all up and running. So now what we are going to do, we're going to add some extra load to the application itself. And application and our system actually going to detect it and react and uh, it's going to scale out the current load and make it more, uh, make it actually uh, deal with the additional load. So let's switch to the actual system. So this is the uh, one of the major components uh, of our system. It's called Service Director. That's the one that does end-to-end -end orchestration. So holds all the configurations, 
all the automation rules, anything you need to set up the workload in uh, any type of environment. So it could be Kubernetes, OpenStack, vCenter, physical environment even, doesn't matter. We do all, all kinds of uh, network functions. So the one that we are focusing today, it's test, like we said. So let's see, right now the test itself, uh, it's, uh, we can see it, this is uh, CNF, so it's a container-based function. And we can see that uh, because right now there is not a lot of extra load, it's actually the way it's set up. We have only one replica in the system. And we can also check, uh, this is our assurance portion. It's always together, orchestration assurance. So in the assurance portion, we can see no alarms. Everything works as it's supposed to. Let's check the load on the system. Load on the system at this point, it's around, so we can see the, it's around five or six. Again, as expected. So now to make it really react, we're going to increase the load on the system itself. So let me go to the control board. So we use this just to kind of uh, do uh, simulate some of the things happening in the system itself. So I'm going to increase the number of the call coming in to 15. So what is going to, what this is going to do is just going to uh, overload the actual uh, test uh, pod that is uh, running in the Kubernetes, and then our, our assurance system is going to be able to detect this change. And based on some rules that we set up before, it's like going to scale out the, the workloads. So let's see if there is any reaction here. So if you remember, it was only five at a certain point. So let's see if there are any changes. So let's see the metrics for our service is task metric. And we can see there are changes that's coming up slowly. So the threshold that we set up uh, for this particular uh, trigger is going to be 10. So we'll have to wait for load to come to the 10 before we can see the system uh, solving the issue. So while we are waiting for that, I'm just going to uh, show that uh, the way the system works is uh, we have a, a, as soon as we deploy the workload, we also collect all the configuration, all the topology behind the scenes. So we can know this particular component is also used by other components so we can uh, have the full service impact assessment based on the, uh, on the rules that we are setting up in the system. So let's see if they are now we are really close to the breach of the threshold. Let's see if we are able to capture any alarms. Oh, they are coming here. So as you, uh, if you can remember, I had all that hierarchy. So even though there was one alarm, I can see it has influenced some, some other services. So in this particular case, like we said, this alarm, the way that we set it up, we were saying that uh, we actually, so this is the threshold that we're looking for, and uh, we were able to detect it. And we can also see that right now, uh, that based on the threshold, this is the component that was affected by the threshold itself. And uh, this is the, uh, the actual name, if you remember all that big curve, that's actually uh, in, the, in the rule itself. And uh, the important part of the rule is actually now we are going to see that there was automatic action that was actually executed. So let's check it here. So this is the uh, this was all pre-configured, pre-packaged. Uh, so actually, this particular uh, because uh, this uh, network function, function tele uh, telephony uh, telephony uh, application server is actually one of our uh, HP co components. This all comes pre-configured. So, but we have uh, also uh, use cases with other uh, other vendors. In this case, so we can see what we are doing here. We need to add additional replica in the in the deployment of this uh, workload. So let's see how does it look in the real life. So if you remember, the service director is the one that actually does configuration. So basically, once we detected everything, we said, OK, this means I have to go back to service director and say, this is the workload that is affected. Do the action. And action is then the one that is going to create uh, the replica. So let's check that. So if you remember, so the, this is containerized function. So the, the components or the rules that we use here, it, uh, it's called CNF deployment. So we can see right now we have two replicas. And if we switch all the way back to, this is the list of the, this is Kubernetes, directly on the Kubernetes uh, cluster. So we can see th this is my original one, three days and something. But this is the one that I just spin up 12 seconds ago. And we can see that the result is of, uh, the action, so the service availability is increased, and it's basically back to normal. So either, uh, and we can see if you remember the whole chain. So we can see that uh, the impact uh, of uh, that service uh, on the, all the other services. 
and basically the uh, the status and the effect propagates and you can also put some rules around it so for example if you have all the if you have a high availability or some uh, uh, ability to do some things automatically you can also reduce the impact uh, on the service you put that in your rules behind the scenes the service is operational it's up and running and Basically, uh, we we didn't touch anything in the system. We, I was just kind of walking through what's happening behind the scenes. So, what are the benefits of this kind of automation? So, benefits is uh, you can really uh, kind of do your configuration from one place, from one service model. Uh, you don't have to do any workflows, no scripting. You don't have to do any coding per se. So we have this system uh, which we, uh, basically you build a model with these rules behind the scenes and we have a smart engine inside of service director that uses these uh, rules that you build up and creates the workflows and automat autom all the actions and all the steps that are required on the fly based on the on the rules excellent midhat thank you very much thank you for having us